What do you know about it, Chigelski? What do any of us know about anything? Hello everyone, this is uh, Jim Jagelski here. Uh, thank you for coming to my channel. If you are a subscriber, I thank you. And if you're not, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. You can do so by clicking the button below. In a lot of ways, what I'll be talking about today is sort of like one of the main reasons why I started this video blog in the first place. Uh, this really was the topic that kind of like convinced me that I needed to start this. It's a topic which I certainly don't think I could do justice with by just having a series of tweets, uh, nor do I think that it was really best suited for a written blog as well. And there weren't really any other opportunities for me to be able to uh, talk about what it was I wanted to, uh, to talk about. And so that really encouraged me to start this, uh, this video log. Now this one will actually be a two-parter, a mini-series, as you will. And it will be concerning about uh, open source. Now I've kind of like resisted uh, doing this talk, mostly because I don't want to sound like an old curmudgeon who's wistfully uh, wishing for the good old days, nor do I want to come off as gloomy doomy, or I certainly don't want this to be misinterpreted as somehow thinking that open source itself is, uh, is doomed or anything like that, or, or in some sort of severe danger, because that's certainly not the case. No, it's really just about the passion and vigilance required in open source and why I think we need to um, recover that and reemphasize that and really make that a priority nowadays. So anyway, let me um, set the stage for you on what caused me to really start thinking about uh, doing this entry. Now my youngest son, Andrew, over the summer was a uh, rising senior. He's a senior in high school now. And he really, really wants to go to University of Texas, Austin, UT Austin, uh, mostly because the major that he wants to get into, which is uh, radio, technology, film, uh, digital media. Uh, UT Austin has a great program for it, an actual school associated with that. Uh, plus he really likes the, uh, the town of Austin. So uh, anyway, by the way, um, if there's anyone at UT Austin or if you can put a plug in for him to get him accepted, thank you. Anyway, um, and the other thing was that uh, he also is a great fan of a company called Rooster Teeth, which is also based out of Austin. And they have a expo called RTX, I guess we're Rooster Teeth Expo. And it was also being presented in Austin during the summertime. So we decided what we would do is kill two birds with one stone and take a long extended weekend and do the UT Austin tour and allow Andrew to go to the RTX conference. Now I have to admit, I was incredibly impressed with the event. RTX has only been around for a handful of years and supposedly they started off with maybe like 600 or so attendees this last year they had 40,000 people attend a huge number they've grown like gangbusters but really impressed me uh, not just the uh, the number of people there but the huge diversity of people who were attending there were uh, techies, uh, cosplayers. There were people who were young, old, male, female, people into gaming, people into computers. I mean, a wide variation of the people who were attending. And without fail, they were all super, super excited to be there. I mean, you could just tell they were just having fun, they knew they were going to have fun. 
Uh, they couldn't wait to hear, meet their heroes and go to the sessions and maybe get uh, pictures with the uh, people and interact with everyone else in their community. I mean, it was really cool. I mean, it was just a neat thing to watch. Uh, just 40, 45,000 people all just loving what they're doing and loving sharing that passion with everyone else. And I started thinking, wow, that is simply the way it's supposed to be. That is so cool. Then I started thinking, wow, over the last couple of decades, I've gone to a bunch of open source and IT conferences. And why is it that conferences like RTX with such energy and passion, why is it that they are the exception rather than the rule? I mean, certainly there are some great open source conferences out that capture that, uh, that excitement. Uh, PazCon is a great example. So is uh, All Things Open. And to be honest, I think ApacheCon also does that as well. But again, they are the minority in cases. Most of the other conferences are, in a lot of ways, uh, boring, stoic. They're just, eh. And it didn't used to be that way. It used to be that people who were attending the conferences just absolutely loved it. The sponsors loved it. The, the people who were presenting loved it. It was fantastic. It was a fun thing to do. It was fun to be part of that. And that energy, that excitement, that passion was infectious. I mean, you got the open source spirit. Hallelujah. When, when you went to these conferences. Now, RMS and I do not agree on a lot of things. But he had a video and I'll put the link to that below in the description area, where he talks about open source and free software, the difference between the two. And he focuses on how, for the free software movement, their passion is built in. Because for them, freedom and software freedom is a moral imperative. It's what drives them. And because it's so important to them, they would be willing to sacrifice things and put forth the effort and things like that. And he just couldn't understand why people would do that with open source. I mean, what is it about open source that makes people do that? He just could not, could not grok what drove the open source developer. Now, I think I have a, have a good idea about that. And I'll talk more about that in part two of the mini series, but in general, I think, is that within the open source movement, you have the ability, the opportunity to hone your skill, to create your craft, to share your passion with other like-minded people. And in the process of doing so, change the world. This was and is the main driver behind open source. This is the reason why innovation is really being powered by the open source movement. There's this old um, phrase called developers scratching their own itch, and it doesn't apply just to developers, of course. But the idea behind it is that there are people who are personally invested in what they're doing and they love what they're doing, and they want to share that with others. But unfortunately, I think nowadays, that, that passion, that excitement, is kind of diminished or disregarded. It doesn't really fit the way we talk about open source anymore. It's all about other things. And I think that's the problem. I think that's the mistake. I think that we need to get back to the day when open source was about passion for the projects and passion for the community. Open source contributors today owe it to the open source movement of tomorrow 
to encourage and foster and nurture the open source contributors of tomorrow. And the best way of doing that is reminding them of how fun it is, about the greatness that you can do when you're contributing to open source by creating communities which are uh, warm and welcoming, which encourage uh, diversity and different voices and a wide collection of ideas and thoughts and people. It's creating a community and a community can only grow and thrive and be healthy if there's always new people coming into that community. So in a lot of ways, open source has kind of won the battle. I mean, when you have uh, open source in the software which is running your car or your microwave or a phone or refrigerator, I mean, it really is prevalent. We have won the battle. But my fear is that without recognizing the duty we have to the next generation of open source contributors, we may just lose the war. And that's not something that I think any of us want. Now, part two of this mini series will be about what, in my opinion, are the causes for these changes in the open source environment, as well as what I think we can do to, uh, to fix them and address those concerns. I encourage you to follow along. Again, subscribe if you haven't. If you do like this video, I would appreciate a, a like on it as well. And join me next time for part two of Passion and Vigilance in Open Source. Thank you.